This song's called Alice's Restaurant. It's about Alice and the restaurant. But Alice's Restaurant is not the name of the restaurant. That's just the name of the song. And that's why I call the song Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Walk right in, it's around the back, just a half a mile from the railroad track. And you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Now it all started two Thanksgivings ago, it was on two years ago on Thanksgiving when my friend and I went up to visit Alice at the restaurant, but Alice doesn't live in the restaurant, she lives in the church nearby the restaurant in the bell tower with her husband Ray and Fotch is a dog, and living in the bell tower like that, they got a lot of room downstairs where the pews used to be, and Having all that room, seeing as how they took out all the pews, they decided that they didn't have to take out their garbage for a long time. We got up there, we found all the garbage in there, and we decided it'd be a friendly gesture for us to take the garbage down to the city dump. So we took the half a ton of garbage, put it in the back of a red VW microbus, took shovels and rakes and implements of destruction, and headed on toward the city dump. Well, we got there, and there's a big sign and a chain across the dump saying closed on Thanksgiving. And we had never heard of a dump closed on Thanksgiving before. And with tears in our eyes, we drove off into the sunset looking for another place to put the garbage. We didn't find one. Till we came to a side road, and off the side of the side road was another 15-foot cliff. And at the bottom of the cliff was another pile of garbage. And we decided that one big pile is better than two little piles, and rather than bring that one up, we decided to throw ours down. That's what we did. Drove back to the church, had a Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat, went to sleep and didn't get up until the next morning when we got a phone call from Officer Obi. He said, kid, we found your name on an envelope at the bottom of a half a ton of garbage, and wanted to know if you had any information about it and I said yes sir officer over cannot tell a lie I put that envelope under that garbage <laughs> after speaking over for about 45 minutes on the telephone we finally arrived at the truth of the matter and said that we had to go down and pick up the garbage and also had to go down and speak to him at the police officer station. So we got in the red VW microbus with the shovels and rakes and implements of destruction headed on toward the police officer station. Now, friends, there was only one or two things that Obi could have done at the police station, and the first was that he could have given us a medal for being so brave and honest on the telephone, which wasn't very likely and we didn't expect it. Another thing was that he could have bawled us out and told us never to be seen driving garbage around vicinity again, which is what we expected, but when we got to the police officer station, there was a third possibility that we hadn't even counted upon, and we was both immediately arrested, handcuffed, and I said, Obi, I don't think I can pick up the garbage with these handcuffs on, he said, shut up, kid, get in the back of the patrol car, and that's what we did, we sat in the back of the patrol car and drove to the, quote, scene of the crime, unquote. I want to tell you about the town of Stockbridge, Massachusetts, where this happened here. They got three stop signs, two police officers, and one police car. But when we got to the scene of the crime, there was five police officers and three police cars being the biggest crime of the last 50 years, and everybody wanted to get in a newspaper story about it. And they was using up all kinds of cop equipment that they had hanging around the police officer station. They was taking plaster tire track footprints, dog smelling prints, and they took 27 8 by 10 color glossy photographs with circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. Took pictures of the approach, the getaway, the northwest corner and southwest corner, and that's not to mention the aerial photography. 
After the ordeal, we went back to the jail. Obi said he was gonna put us in the cell. Said, kid, I'm gonna put you in the cell. I want your wallet and your belt. And I said, Obi, I can understand you want my wallet so I don't have any money to spend in the cell, but what do you want my belt for? And it said, kid, we don't want any hangings. Said, Obi, did you think I was gonna hang myself for littering? Obi said he was making sure, and friends Obi was, cause he took out the toilet seat so I couldn't hit myself over the head and drown. And he took out the toilet paper so I couldn't bend the bars, roll out the roll the toilet paper out the window, slide down the roll and have an escape. Obi was making sure, and it was about four or five hours later that Alice, remember Alice? It's a song about Alice. Alice came by with a few nasty words to Obi on the side, bailed us out of jail, we went back to the church, had another Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat and didn't get up until the next morning when we all had to go to court. We walked in, sat down, Obi came in with a 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back each one, sat down. Man came in, said, all rise. We all stood up, and Obi stood up with the 27, 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures. And the judge walked in, sat down with the C&I dog, and he sat down. We sat down. Obi looked at the C&I dog. And then the 27, 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one, and looked at the C&I dog. And then the 27, 8 by 10, colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one and began to cry because Obi came to the realization that it was a typical case of American blind justice and there wasn't nothing he could do about it. And the judge wasn't going to look at the 27, 8 by 10, colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. And we was fined fifty dollars and had to pick up the garbage in the snow, but that's not what I came to tell you about. Came to talk about the draft. We got a building down in New York City, it's called Whitehall Street, where you walk in and you get injected, inspected, detected, infected, neglected, and selected. I went down to get my physical examination one day and I walked in and sat down. Got good and drunk the night before, so I looked and felt my best when I went in that morning. Cause I wanted to look like the all-American kid from New York City. Man, I wanted, I wanted to feel like all. I wanted to be the all-American kid from New York. And I walked in, sat down, I was hung down, brung down, hung up and all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly things. And I walked in, I sat down, they gave me a piece of paper, said, kid, see the psychiatrist, room 604. And I went up there, I said, shrink, I want to kill. I mean, I want, I want to kill, kill. I want, I want to see, I want to see blood and gore and guts and veins in my teeth. Eat dead, burnt bodies. I mean, kill, 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 kill. And I started jumping up and down, yelling, kill, kill. And it started jumping up and down with me, and we was both jumping up and down, yelling, kill, kill. The sergeant came over, pinned the metal on me, sent me down the hall, said, you're our boy. And you feel too good about it. Uh, proceeded on down the hall, getting more injections, inspections, detections, neglections, and all kinds of stuff that they was doing to me at the thing there. And I was there for two hours, three hours, four hours. I was there for a long time, going through all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly things, and I just having a tough time there and they was inspecting injecting every single part of me and they wasn't leaving no part untouched proceeded through and i went finally came to see the very last man i walked in walked in sat down after a whole big thing there and i walked up and said what do you want he said kid we only got one question have you ever been arrested And I proceeded to tell him the story of Alice's Restaurant, Massacre, with full orchestration and five-part harmony and stuff like that. And then all the phenomena stopped me right there and said, Kid, did you ever go to court? 
I proceeded to tell them the story of the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one that stopped me right there and said, kid, I want you to go over and sit down on that bench that says Group W. Now, kid. And I, I walked over to the, to the bench there, and there's, there's Group W is where they, where they put you if you may not be moral enough to, to join the army after committing your special crime. And there was all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly-looking people on the bench there. There's mother rapers, father stabbers, father rapers. <laughs> Father Rape was sitting right there on the bench next to me and one day was mean and nasty and ugly and horrible and crime fighting guys was sitting there on the bench and the meanest, ugliest, nastiest one the meanest Father Raper of them all was coming over to me and he was mean and ugly and nasty and horrible and all kinds of things and he sat down next to me and said, kid, what'd you get? Said I didn't get nothing. I had to pay fifty dollars and pick up the garbage. He <laughs> said, "What were you arrested for, kid?" And I said, "Littering." And they all moved away from me on the bench there to carry I bone all kinds of mean, nasty things till I said and creating a nuisance. And they all came back, shook my hand, and we had a great time on the bench talking about crime, mother stem, father rape, and all kinds of groovy things that we was talking about on the bench. And everything was fine. We were smoking cigarettes and all kinds of things until the sergeant came over, had some paper in his hand, held it up, and said, kids, this piece of paper's got 47 words, 37 cents, it's 58 words. We want no details of crime, time, crime, and that kind of thing. Got slap, time, turn about the crime, I know the rest, not just name, and that kind of thing. You got to say in the talk for 45 minutes, and nobody understood a word that he said. But we had fun filling out the forms and playing with the pencils on the bench there. And I filled out the massacre with the four-part harmony, and... Wrote it down there just like it was, and everything was fine. And I put down a pencil and I turned over the piece of paper, and and there, there on the other side, in the middle of the other side, away from everything else on the other side, in parentheses capital letters quotated read the following words kid you rehabilitated yourself I went over to the sergeant and said sergeant you've got a lot of damn gall to ask me if I've rehabilitated myself I mean I mean I mean I just, I'm sitting here on the bench. I mean, I'm sitting here on the Group W bench. Because you want to know if I'm moral enough to join the army, burn women, kids, houses, and villages after being a litter bug. <laughs> he looked at me and said, Kid, you don't like your kind. <laughs> <laughs>